Hey students, in today's video, we're going to be summarizing Vesper. So we're going to be summarizing, kind of going through all those structures that we drew and kind of talking about their bond angles and how they're affected by lone pairs or double bonds. So uh, kind of without any further ado, we're going to get to that. But there is one small mistake. Miss Griffith forgot to include the the four and one of five. So you'll need to add that on maybe at the bottom. I did three, two, cause I hadn't realized it before I started drawing my pictures in, but we'll kind of get to that in just a couple of seconds. So summarizing Vesper 2.7 B. So here's kind of some headlines. The geometry of a molecule is determined by the number of electron groups and electron groups are what we talked about in the last video. Those are the ones that are around the central atom. And here's the thing that we need to remember is that, let's change this from yellow, maybe go pink. All right. That a single electron group counts as a lone pair, a single bond, a double bond, a triple bond, or even a single electron. So if I have a double bond on the central atom, that's only one electron group. It's not like I add that to my uh, Vesper total and so then I have more. All right. Then uh, the other thing to remember is the geometry of the electron groups is determined by their repulsions as follows. So if I have a lone pair next to a lone pair, their angles are going to be very distorted because they're very repulsive to each other. If I have a lone pair next to a bonding pair, again, this will be repulsive and my bond angles will be affected. If I have bond air or bonding pairs next to a bonding pair, my angle shouldn't be affected. So if we take, um, let's read that last statement and then we're going to go back and look up at the pictures there. Bond angles can vary from the ideal ang idealized angles because double and triple bonds occupy more space because there's more electrons there. Um, and then our lone pairs make the bond angle smaller because of the large repulsion of those electrons. So let's just kind of take a peek through. If we look at like three, our group of three, our trigonal planar, if you go back up to that section. Now, if we have zero lone pairs, our shape is trigonal planar and our bond angle is 120. All right, such as the case for BF3. Now, if we look at, we have a lone pair here, our bond angle is actually going to change just a little bit. It's going to be less than 120. We know it's less than 120 because that lone pair is sitting on top and repulsing the bonding pairs away from each other. They would rather be closer to the bonding pairs than to the lone pair. So it kind of squishes the angle. So our key there is we have less than 120. Kind of the same thing happens with our tetrahedral. All right, so we've got four uh, electron groups. And so our original tetrahedral is 109.5. When we throw a lone pair on there, such as the case with NH3, our bond angle becomes less than 109.5. So please make sure you're actually putting that in there. All right. Uh, same thing with our water, or excuse me, our two lone pairs on four, right? Our bond angle is less than 109, okay? If we do that with our five, these are our true bond angles, 120 and 90. Then if we go four, one, these bond angles are just a little bit squished down. They're a little bit less than 90 and a little bit less than 120. And by the way, we took, sorry about that, the reason we took it out from here is because these bond angles are 120. And when we lose, uh, we're trying to keep the repulsions as far away from each other as possible. So if we're going to put a lone pair anywhere, we're going to keep it away from the others. And 120 is a larger angle than 90. That's why we did not go above and below the plane. Uh, that kind of same thing works there. Uh, the third one, though, when we have three lone pairs, these guys are just linear. So this is an exact 180 because there's no um, lone pairs on it. But our key is just making sure that we're a little bit less than 90 when we have lone pairs. Or there's our one. This one's T-shaped. And those are all perfect because those are in the plane and they're kind of pushing it. You could maybe say that it's a little bit less than uh, 180 and a little bit less than 90 because those lone pairs are pushing away. All right, so if you wanted to add that, you would be welcome to. The AP is really more about why are they there? So you would be given like something with three electron groups and it would say, why are these bond angles less than those bond angles? And you would say because there's a lone pair or because there's multiple bonds. 
Okay, so let's kind of look at the, our reasoning and then be done with our video here. Uh, so why do triple bonds and double bonds take up more space than single bonds? And this is just solely because there are more electrons. And there's more of a chance for repulsion. All right, more electrons, more repulsion. Okay, um, then if we go with our lone pairs, why do they cause them to be distorted or less than they should be? Again, we have more electrons in a smaller space. And so they are being repulsive. All right. And this all goes back to both of these are about Coulomb's law. So if you notice, we have actually revisited Coulomb's law quite frequently here. So it's going to come up a lot. So one of our best friends in chemistry when it talks about energy is Coulomb's law. Okay, see you next time.